the criminal justice system as a political weapon. The legal tactic has been to gin up allegations of criminality by one's political opponents based on the flimsiest of legal theories. And who would we be talking about? Which party has been doing that? Okay, Attorney General Barr, tell us who in the last few decades have been doing that. And if they did it, why has no one gone to jail? Because Mr. Attorney General, like the rest of the clowns who preceded you, you do nothing. You get up and pontificate. So let's listen to what other hot air you're going to blow. This is not a good development. This is not good for our political life, and it's not good for the criminal justice system. Okay, so now we have a, a philosopher general, a moralist general, not an attorney general. As long as I'm attorney general, the criminal justice system will not be used for uh, partisan political ends. And this is especially true uh, for the upcoming elections in, in November. We live in a very divided country right now, and I think that it is critical that we have an election where the American people are allowed to make a decision, a choice, between President Trump and Vice President Biden based on a robust debate of policy issues. And so now he's going to become Professor Meritas on how our democracy is supposed to work while he's Attorney General. And his new name in Latin is Provolactus Magistratum. So now you're a Provolactic, uh, a.k.a. Condom Bar. Is that what I'm to believe? You're going to be preventive maintenance against another attack on another Republican election, right? But without justice or redress for what the Manchurian Obama did and the crooked Hillary Clinton did, again, how many criminal acts has she committed that we all know about? Little Miss email, server, telephone smasher, bleach bit, bleach bitch. Cannot allow this process to be hijacked by efforts to drum up criminal investigations uh, of either candidate. Either, either. I admitted that this election will be conducted without this kind of interference. Any effort to pursue an investigation of either candidate has to be approved by me. Now what happened to the president, and I've said this many times, what happened to the president in the 2016 election and throughout the first two years of his administration was abhorrent. Abhorrent. It was a grave injustice and it was unprecedented in American history. The law enforcement and intelligence apparatus of this country were involved in advancing a false an utterly baseless Russian collusion narrative against the president. The proper investigative and prosecutive standards of the Department of Justice were abused, in my view, in order to reach a particular result. We saw two different standards of justice emerge, one that applied to President Trump and his associates, and the other that applied to everybody else. We can't allow this ever to happen again. The Durham investigation is trying to get to the bottom of what happened, and it will determine whether there were any federal laws broken, and if there were, those who broke the laws uh, will be held to account. Well, let's just hear who will be held to account. But this cannot be, and it will not be, a tit-for-tat exercise. We are not going to lower the standards just to achieve a result. The only way to stop this vicious cycle, the only way to break away from a dual system of justice is to make sure that we scrupulously apply 
the single and proper standard of justice for everybody. Now, under the longstanding standards of the department, criminal charges are appropriate only when we have enough evidence to prove each element of a crime beyond a reasonable doubt. That is the standard we're applying. Worked out good for the Clintons. Worked out good for Obama. Worked out good for all those false servers, emails, China collusion, Joe Biden, crooked Ukraine, and China deals that made him hundreds of millions of dollars. Hey, listen, attorney, stop the nonsense, okay? Stop Stop pulling on a certain appendage on my anatomy. We're tired of this. Let me tell you what we want, justice. And if we don't get it, if this shit isn't redressed soon, the people are going to demand it themselves. And then we're going to come. And we're going to come down to Washington, D.C. with meat cleavers. And there's going to be justice doled out one way or another. The old axiom that says those who in the name of liberty will do away with justice will lose their liberty for justice. Now, Barr, you've been, you've been sitting on your chubby little ass for too long. Okay? You look soft. Now, Durham didn't strike me as someone who looks soft, so I'm still going to hold out hope that he's going to institute the justice needed by this democracy before people like, well, we know who they are, completely destroy it. So we don't need your moralization, interpretation, or rationalization. What we need from you, chubby boy, is to man up, grab your sack, and start locking these scumbags up. And then, and only then, will this stop. And if you don't do your job, Attorney General Barr, I most assuredly <laughs> am here to tell you, people like me and thousands of others will do it for you. Wake up, smell the coffee, and start taking out the trash. Because we have fucking had it. Now, I have a general idea of how Mr. Durham's investigation is going. And as I have indicated, some aspects of the matter are being examined as potential crimes. But we have to bear in mind what the Supreme Court recently reminded us of in the Bridgegate case. As the court said there, there's a difference between an abuse of power and a federal crime. Not every abuse of power, no matter how outrageous, is necessarily a federal crime. How about treason? Now, uh, how about sedition? President Obama and Vice President Biden, whatever their level of involvement, based on the information I have today, I don't expect Mr. Durham's work will lead to a criminal investigation of either man. Our concern over potential criminality is focused on others. Thanks for your... Well, I don't know what he means. Uh, he did not exonerate Mata Hari Clinton, but I'm going to tell you something. If, if, if we don't have justice, if you're a president or an ex-president and you break the law, or a vice president, and justice isn't meted out, like any other citizen, then this country is completely full of crap anyway. And we are nothing but a lie. We elect presidents. We do not crown or anoint kings. Okay? There is no right of kings. I heard Rush Limbaugh a week and a half ago talking about, well, they're not going to go after a former president. Then what in the hell are we about? What in the hell do we go around moralizing to the world about our sense of government, rule of law, and democracy. If everybody capitulates to that, let's just do this. Let's just pick a guy with a brain, anoint him a dictator, and be done with all the nonsense. We'll save a lot of money. What do we need these investigations for that go on forever? To no end. What did Mueller spend of the taxpayers' money? Almost $200 million. 200 effing million dollars. And all you stupid asses out there, just keep paying your taxes. Because their party should never stop. I'm so sick of this crap, there are no longer any words.